What's up and welcome to today's video. We're on episode four now, so we're racking up the episodes. I'm joined today by a guest, so it's going to be a special guest. He's a friend of mine, he's a psychologist, he's a mindset coach, and he's trained below Dr. D. Martini as well. So he's a very, very knowledgeable person. He's going to drop some value and it's going to be a very, very good call. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited to just share some of the insights that he has, some of the insights that we have together and I'm sure you're gonna gain some value away from it. So stay tuned, we're gonna talk about the whole funding process as well and some of the things that I went through at the time as well, so it's gonna be good. And um, yeah, I've got, just got a few things to brush up on before I go through that and then we're gonna get into the call. So I will speak to you soon. So it's a little bit later on now. We are joined by a good friend, Pat Balooni. So Pat is a psychologist. I'll let Pat explain a little bit more about what he does, why he does it, and offer some tips and tricks. But welcome, Pat. It's good to uh, jump on a call. We've been on about this call for a while, so. Absolutely, Ben. It's, it's good to finally um, be on a call with you and, and share some value with your um, audience today. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like Ben introduced me as, my name is um, Pat Balooni. And I am a, a mindset coach and a mindset consultant. And I work specifically with, with traders and investors now um, to help them sharpen their edge and find their edge in the market from a, a psychological and a mindset perspective. Um, because I think you, yourself included, man, but everybody would agree that once you sort of identify your strategy, once you identify your technical skill in the market, and once you know where your entries go, where your exits go, um, there's really one thing that stops you from executing on that flawlessly and that's yourself. Um, so I really help traders and investors and even poker players and athletes and, and entrepreneurs execute and do what they know they should be doing and, and what they know they, they need to be doing to um, excel in their respective fields. So it's a little bit about me um, and I work one-on-one -on -one and I, I coach um, traders and investors and, and that type of stuff and also have um, content out there as well to help people really um, up their game and, and really perform at a higher level. Yeah. By the way, just a quick thing. Pat also has a, you have a free thing you want to give away to people coming in. And Pat, do you want to talk a little bit about that for people? Yeah. So all if they want some free value to offer, that'd be good for somebody to take away from this call. So. Yeah. Awesome. I've got a, uh, I'm coming up with a, a a trader's mindset um, mindset mastery series on YouTube. So this is a free YouTube series for people to check out um, to go in there. And it's about a 10 or 11 episode series so far of just really quick fire uh, applications and uh, really practical tools you can implement into your trading and investing um, to help you perform at a high level. So I encourage you guys to check that out. It's going to be extremely valuable and there's going to be a lot of free value in there to help you improve your trading. Yeah, it's definitely going to be good. I've already watched two or three episodes so far, so it's, it's good. It's good for yeah. sure. Free so, that no worries. But for those of you who don't know, me, myself and Pat have been friends for two years, three years? Yeah, about two, three years now, yeah. Two, three years. We've been talking for a while. Group calls, masterminds, you know, the whole nine yards. So it's been, it's been incredible to see Pat's journey and vice versa as well. It's been good to kind of progress together, find our own niche in trading styles and it's just crazy to how far we've come so far, right? Hundred percent, man. And um, yeah, it's been it's been a wild journey, I guess, for both of us going through and, and and learning our trading and developing our own unique styles in the markets, and then um, going off and obviously you're doing such amazing things on on YouTube and, and building a community here, um, and me going off and you know studying some of the psychology and human behavior stuff and bringing that to the trading as well. I think we've both found a quite a great niche that 
niche that suits us in the, in the trading industry, as well as trading, of course. So, yeah. Yeah, facts. Now yeah, that's good. But just to quick, give a quick overview, I came to Pat after, so linking this back into the Six Figure Series, I came to Pat, was it September time after I just passed? And I knew that Pat was going to help me out. So basically wanted to look at the funding process and I wanted to, I was kind of hyping the whole process up. I was like putting on a pedestal and it was this massive thing in my mind, but I wanted to kind of neutralize that as much as possible and just find out, okay, there's pros to this, but what is the negatives to this as well? Because as you know, Pat, you're quite big on polarity and balancing the two objectives between the two. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because we jumped on a call, we were discussing some obviously personal things, but you helped me neutralize that hyped up, you know, on a pedestal thing. 100% Bamba. And I see this very, very commonly, especially in the retail trading space where a lot of people are going for funding and they've got the funding way up on a pedestal and they, they're only seeing the advantages, only seeing the benefits from the funding. And I mean, that's a very you know easy, I guess, trap to fall into. It's very common for people to just see that. Um, but the issue of being in that position and having funding way up on a pedestal is that whenever you have something up on a pedestal, you sort of self-minimize relative to that. And you really lack confidence relative to that as well. And you're in a position thinking that, you know, this particular funding here, I'm lacking confidence. I'm not quite worthy of having that particular funding. Um, and the only reason we have that perception is because we're assuming that that funding has all positives, all advantages, but it doesn't have drawbacks and risks associated with it. Um, so the process I took you through, Bam, was just making you aware, just looking what's always been there, but you're not quite aware of initially to the drawbacks, to the disservices and to the risks of that particular funding. And we didn't make anything up. We just had a look at what was actually there, but you couldn't quite see in that particular moment. Um, and the moment you're aware of the risks and the drawbacks and the disservices of that funding, for example, you know, seeing that, you know, the additional stress of trading larger capital, um, potentially things around how you're perceived by family and friends, um, particularly sometimes there's risks and drawbacks associated with your health and with your relationships and those types of things. If you can make yourself aware of those risks and drawbacks, you take the funding off the pedestal and now you're level with the funding. You're no longer lacking confidence to the funding, but you feel like you're on the same level as the funding and you feel worthy of achieving that and attaining that. And ultimately you're on the same level. It's just time before you achieve it as opposed to having it up here. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot more of a, of an uphill battle as opposed to a smooth transition. Um, so going in there and making yourself aware of the risks and drawbacks is a very powerful process to help you gain more confidence in light of that goal, to help clear any anxieties and fears. Because whenever we're pursuing a fantasy up on a pedestal, our brain creates anxieties and fears to counterbalance that fantasy. So the moment you make yourself aware of the drawbacks, you clear the anxieties and fears, and you're ultimately in a better position to achieve that funding now that you have the confidence, and now that it's not such an anxious or fearful journey, you just execute according to your plan, you'll eventually get that funding. Um, and the other additional step here as well, um, Bamba, is that now that you're aware of the risks and drawbacks of that funding, real risks that will happen when you get that funding, you can now plan and prepare for those risks as well. So say, for example, if there's a risk that you've associated with that, with that funding now about it having an effect on your, on your health and it bringing a lot more stress, in foresight, you can plan things to mitigate that. You can go in there and what are the things I can implement to my trading now to lower the probability of that stress? Are the things I can add to my plan? Are the things I can add to my daily routines um, to help me mitigate that stress? So you're pretty much in foresight, identifying everything that can go wrong and then putting contingencies and risk management uh, uh, procedures in place to deal with those things if they do happen. Um, and to me, that's a much wiser way to accomplish goals as opposed to you know putting things up on pedestals and and then just you know shooting for the stars and maybe getting it, maybe not. And then when those risks come, being unprepared for them. Um, for me, I, I, I think the 30 minutes it takes to do that exercise we went through, um, it, it has a huge impact. And that's been true in your life as well. Um, obviously now that, that you are funded and, and, and all that type of stuff as well, so. It was a great process. It was, it was easy for you to do, but it was hard for me to answer the questions. Because I remember at the time, I remember you asking, it, we were trying to balance the positives and the negatives and I was trying to think of the negatives. I remember being sat there just like, 
can't think of any more negatives. Like I thought was like three to five, then after that it gets harder and harder and harder and harder. So I think it's a, uh, but the, the good thing behind that, you get to the core reason, you get to the, the actual, you dig up the dirt and you get to the core reason of, you know, what's trying to hold you back. So it yep. gets, you get to, you get to the unconscious and the questions that are, are difficult to answer, are usually the questions that uh, are wise to ask and wise to answer because they're the ones like you mentioned, help you dig up the dirt and get to the, to the root cause of, of, of the thing. So, yeah. It's a great process. Yeah, I definitely held you accountable on that call. There was a, yeah, there was a, you, bit, of, you there was a bit of fire coming back and forth. <laughs> I think that was our first coaching call as well, right? That was our first like one-to-one -one call we jumped on. So it was a good way to, uh, we went straight in the deep end, so to say. <laughs> we did, we did. But yeah, did you want to offer any more tips beside this? Because obviously funding is a big goal for probably a lot of the audience, but is there any other tips, whether that's mentally or physically, that people can offer you know, actually apply and think about, or at least spark thought um, yeah. after the video. Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple of things that I'd love to share. Um, the first one here is just a very uh, practical application to anybody's trading to really help them um, take things to the next level. And it's around expectations in the market. Um, sometimes as traders, we set very rigid expectations of what we expect from the market. And, um, and for example, we can look at Euro dollar now and we can say Euro dollar has to sell off, right? That's my bias. That's my hard bias. Euro dollar has to sell off. Or if you're trading a different market or in cryptos or in stocks, having an expectation would be this stock or this crypto has to go up. And you have to understand as a trader and investor, the person with the most information in the game wins. The person who has the most data can make the most objective decisions and then they can all find you know, the best edge in that moment to make the best decision. And whenever we set rigid expectation of this has to happen or this doesn't have to happen and we get really rigid in our expectations, our brain actually has something called confirmation bias to only let in information that supports our expectation. So say, for example, we say Eurodoll has to sell off and that's the expectation we set. Um, we then have confirmation bias to find evidence to support why Eurodoll has to sell off. And I know I'm guilty of this and I'm not sure if you are, Bamboo, but I'm sure there's some people in the in the um, audience that probably have been where we set a particular trade. We're not quite certain on that trade. And then we put in indicators or we go and look at correlating pairs to find evidence to support why we're right on that trade and why it has to go in, in our in our direction. And we add things onto the chart to support our bias. That's an, that's an indication of confirmation bias. That's an indication that you're not certain on that position that you're in. And our brain also has disconfirmation bias to block out any information that challenges our expectations. So the moment you set a rigid expectation, you pretty much block yourself out from very important information in the market. You only let in information that supports your bias. You don't let in any other information. And you have to keep in mind that that information you're blocking out could be communicating very important information to you. Risks, cues, things to get in, things to get out the market, things to add more to your position all those types of things. Because remember, the person with the most information in the game wins, right? So one of the wisest things that I pass on to, you know, traders when, when I work with traders is to train them to watch their expectations and to not set any outcome-based expectations of what they think the position is going to do. So for example, instead of watching your dollar saying, this has to sell off, I'm going to get into a sell because this has to sell off, it has to go down. Um, what I've observed the best traders are doing is they're not making outcome-based decisions based on their expectations, but they're having a look at their rules and their processes that they've created. And they see, does your dollar align with my particular trading plan? Or does it align with my particular process, the rules I have? And they ultimately make process-based decisions. They make a decision based on what their, if, if their processes are met, they, they put a position on. If they're not, they, they're not trying to make decisions based on what they think the market's going to do. Um, so ultimately, the, the first, you know, piece of um, trading mindset value that I'd love to pass on is watch your expectations and don't set rigid expectations of which way the market has to go and don't make decisions based on what you think the outcome will be. Because when you do that, you block yourself off from very important information with your biases. Rather, make decisions based on your processes and your trading plan. And if you don't have a trading plan or processes, um, that could be a really good driving force to go off and, and create one and find, you know, a particular strategy or style that works for you and find data to support 
um, you know, your your trading style and go and find your edge in the market and create a trading plan so you can go off and execute according to that trading plan rationally, not execute based on what you think is going to happen or your emotions. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a bit of an insight to you know watching your expectations and how you can practically apply that to to your trading. That's an important point as well because the you know it's very easy for those emotions to kick to kick full. If you don't have a plan in place, if you don't have a process, if you don't know what you're looking for, and you're not you know you're conflicted and you only see one side of the market, when that trade comes, it's going to be very easy for you to just emotionally attach yourself to a bias, and then if that doesn't play out, you know. The laptop's going to go through the window <laughs> so it's very easy to to get conflicted and just biased towards that perspective like you said instead of taking a step back looking at things from a neutral perspective and having everything in place for that neutral approach as well so it's key 100 percent, man and warren buffett said it best i think he said that um don't expect uh, yourself to manage your money until you can manage your emotions and ultimately a lot of traders out there are being run by the fear of losing or the greed of winning and they're making irrational decisions based on their emotions as opposed to making rational decisions based on their plan. And ultimately, if you can create that plan and you don't set expectations, so you can stick to that plan, you're, you're pushing yourself into the, you know, the, the top 1% of traders in the world because 99% of traders out there don't have that. And you know, we've seen the stats, 90, 90 plus percent of traders don't actually make it. So um, it's, it's not a surprise why. Yeah, 100%. Because there'll be there'll be people watching this call who you know just emotionally trade. So if we can put something in place and give that spark for people to think, which I think we're we're doing now, is it's going to be a very good key. Because um, like you said, if you can't manage those emotions, you can't. You're never going to be able to scale capital. You're never going to be able to build the skill of trading because everything interlinks with the emotional, the emotional attachment to trades and you know that outcome of the trade as well. So it's, uh, it's very, very important. Hundred percent, and this sort of sparked another another idea in my head as well. Do you mind if I if I share? For sure, man. For sure. Okay. Going a little bit more macro into you know more general life stuff as well, because I believe that everybody has you know seven areas to your life, and trading is just one component of your life. Um, and it may be a high priority for some people. Um, it may be a little bit of a lower priority for other people. But ultimately, we all have other things in our life as well as our trading. Um, so one additional thing that I think is incredibly valuable to traders. It's just gaining more of a, a life structure. And um, I usually ask traders, like, where do you want to be in the next year or so, or even beyond that? And a lot of them don't actually know. Truly, they, they just don't necessarily know where they would love to be with their trading. And then here's an even more interesting one. I ask them, where are they currently with their trading? And 95% of the traders can't actually give me an accurate uh, gauge of where they currently are in the journey. It's usually you know, not a very objective view of where they are. So what I realized is that traders don't know where they where they are necessarily. They don't know where they want to get to, but they have all these ambitious goals. And to me, there's a bit of a disconnect towards that. So what I would suggest every trader out there is to get incredibly clear on where they objectively are in their journey right now, where they would love to be in the next, say, year, even beyond that. And then what are the specific high priority actions you're going to do every single day to get you from where you are to where you would love to be? Say for example, now you're, you know, maybe you have a 50% complete trading plan. You're maybe a little bit inconsistent with your trading. Maybe you're a little bit emotional, but you would love to be funded. And you know that you want, you want to get, you want to get a funded account. That's a goal of yours. Great. I would be sitting down and asking myself the question, what's the difference between where I am now and where I'd love to be. Right. And maybe it's completing the trading plan. Maybe it's, you know, doing more tests. Maybe it's getting three months of live trading under your belt as well. Great, and then I'd be asking myself, what's the highest priority action steps I can be doing every single day to move me forward towards that? And really creating some form of a, of a structure. I think some of the best resources out there are things like Google Calendar and Notion. Um, I I know you use Notion, Bamba. Even a whiteboard, right? Just, just even a piece of paper and a pen, to be honest, right? Just the most simple things. But every day asking yourself, what's the highest priority thing I can be doing, the highest priority action step? A lot of people write down major tasks on their lists, but the action, what's the specific action step you can be doing right now to move you forward towards your goals, I think is so, so powerful. And what happens is you build momentum every day. Um, you, you start to you know, build self-confidence, momentum, and over time you, you start to build a lot of momentum and then you become a force to be reckoned with. And you look back and you realize, holy crap, I just accomplished my goal. 
it's been a it's been a year of it's been a year of work, but I've I've gotten to where it is I would love to get to through high priority action steps every day. And I think we can sort of both attest to that with you know what level of success we've had in our own journeys is it pretty much came down to doing very simple action steps every single day that just add up over a period of time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that would be another one I, I, I throw out there is get clear on where you are, get clear on where you would love to get to, and get clear, incredibly clear on what are the highest priority action steps you can be doing daily to get you from where you are to where you would love to be. Yeah. It's such a simple concept, but it's, it's almost too simple that people overlook it and they don't do it. Um, so I really want to put that foundational step out there. Wow, that's a very, very good point, actually, because so many people have these big ambitious goals they put on the pedestal, but they don't have, you know, I'm a big believer you don't have to worry about the how, but you also have to put things in place. You know, if you, yep. oh, it's like being in a car, if you're 100 miles away from your destination, you've got to know the, this, the, the travel distance and where you're actually going to go to get there. So that's what you see behind me, like you won't be able to see the specifics of what's on there, but that's essentially just me writing chief aims. That's that's okay. Here's where I am. Here's where I want to be. Here's the steps that I need to take off to get there, essentially. So it's such yep. an important point. And I'm such a proponent of I like I I support people who have massive goals. And I think that's like one of the, the most incredible things of being able to being what, what you're able to do as a human being, set great audacious goals. But it almost kills me a little bit to see that people some people who have great audacious goals don't have very specific action steps that they're going to take on a daily basis. And what ends up happening is they end up beating themselves up that they're not at their audacious goals yet because they haven't chunked it down to a small enough action step that you take on a daily basis. Um, and I, I just think it's so, so important and so key, like you mentioned as well, you know where you want to get to at the end of the journey, but what's the in-between? What, what's the in-between between where you are now and where you would love to get to? And getting clear on that, structuring that into some calendar, into some notion checklist, is a powerful way to build momentum. Yeah. And also from a psychology standpoint as well, if you're looking at that massive goal, you know, and you're not mentally accustomed to the fact that you believe you can achieve that yet, you're never going to get that. You are never going to get that. Yeah. It's that lack of confidence thing that we're talking about before, right? And so if you actually break it down, you think, okay, I've got this big goal. Let's say, say seven, eight figures capital trading wise. At this point in time, you may not believe you're going to get that. Mm -hmm. But if you put smaller steps in place and be like, okay, well, if you know, like you said, back test, get the data. Okay, I want to get funding, scale the funding. There's different steps you can put in place, and before you know it, it's just a momentum cycle, and you're you've already built up a winning mindset from ticking those goals off, which is such an important point. Yep, and and even further than that, you realize that all those you know bigger checkpoints can be chunked down into the simple action step of forecasting and executing on a daily basis then maybe doing some sort of review on a weekly basis, then maybe doing you know, a coaching call on a monthly basis to refine and learn more. And it, it can be broken down even into you know, more minute action steps. And you realize that the seven to eight figure funding is these particular action steps, which aren't that difficult to do on a daily basis. It's just executing them on a daily basis consistently is what will eventually get you to that, that large outcome, the seven to eight figures, right? It's very true. Because like you said at the start of the call, once you've got the skill down, which we know from, from time, it takes a long time to get that. But with time you evolve, you adapt things, you try, you experiment, you feel, you grow, repeat, right? But you know, by doing that, you then get that process in place and then continuously grow. So once you've got that, then it's the psychology part. That's when this starts to take place because we've all heard, you know, I've, you know, it's 80% psychology, 20% trading ability. Who knows how much of that true? I per personally say it's more sort of 90, 10, but everyone has different opinions about that. But psychology is a massive part of trading and just the emotional attachment to be able to scale your trading capital too. So, yeah. yeah. And ultimately, I think a couple of the concepts we touched on here today will, will really help deal with the, the mindset work in there. Um, but ultimately, if you can train yourself to see both sides in the market, um, see both sides, when you, for example, when you lose in the market, if you can make yourself aware of what you've gained an equal amount from that loss, and what I see very common is traders beat themselves up when they take financial loss, but they, they're not aware that they're actually gaining wealth in a different form. They're gaining intellectual wealth, they're gaining lessons, they're gaining accountability and drive, they're gaining awarenesses that they wouldn't have if they'd gained the money. So make in training your brain to see the pairs of opposites and realize, all right, I may have lost financial 
wealth here. I may have taken a loss in the market, but I've equally gained in terms of intellectual and the knowledge and the lessons and the accountability and the drive and the awareness and the accountability to stick to my trading plan, the accountability to stick to high priority actions in the market and high priority setups. And I think ultimately, if you can train your mind to see that when you lose in the market, there's an equal and opposite gain, helps deal with losses in the market. And vice versa, when you win in the market to make yourself aware of what you've lost an equal amount, so you don't puff, puff yourself up above equilibrium when you're trading. Because it's very common for traders when they start doing really well to think they're better than the market. And then they start projecting onto the market what they think is going to happen. And ultimately, you and I, Bantha, we've taken enough losses in our journey to realize that the, the market's never wrong. So if we're in a state of pride and puffing and projecting onto the market, we're going to ultimately get humbled. So being able to self-govern and self-neutralize in the market, when you take losses, find the advantages. When you take wins, find the disadvantages to keep yourself present and poised and listening to the market um, is a very, very powerful concept that I think will you know, really help take traders to the next level, especially when they start to scale. Because as you trade more and more capital, the emotional volatilities on win and loss start to get larger. And if you have these principles, these tools, they help you deal with those emotional volatilities. And ultimately, they just help you stick to your plan at the end of the day, which I think is the cornerstone to being a successful trader, sticking to your processes. Yeah, 100%. Like you said, the market can humble you very, very quickly. And we've had that multiple times in the past. So you've got to drop that ego. And like you said, come back to equilibrium, balance the two sides of pros and cons and see things from a balanced state of mind. Instead of, you know, you get on a three, four, five, six trade winning streak and you feel on top of, on top of the world. But you've got to be able to balance that out and come back to, to 50% equilibrium instead of uh, and it works on the other way as well this is where self-sabotage kicks in I'm sure i'm sure you've been through this in the past i know i have self-sabotage when you almost you get on a winning streak you try and hold yourself back subconsciously and then this is where it comes in of trying to get to those core beliefs and puts a process in place to overcome that so there's one other thing i'd love to share as well mike um and that's an observation that i've had you know working with the quite a few clientele now in terms of traders. I've been fortunate to work with a spectrum of traders. And what I mean is I've had the opportunity to work with traders who are literally just trading demo accounts and they're just starting off in their journey. I've also had the opportunity to work with um, some clients who are taking on significant amount amounts of funding. Um, and I've been able to see sort of the differences and everywhere in between of that. And there's one particular principle or concept that I've seen very common that differentiates the, what I'm going to class, uh, classify as amateur traders to master traders. So the traders who do, uh, you know, really well in the markets, and maybe the traders who don't do too, too well, or the consistent traders and the inconsistent traders, right? Um, and the key principle that I've seen that differentiates consistent traders from inconsistent traders or master traders from amateur traders is that the master consistent trader is really all they're focused on is their processes. They're really disattaching themselves and they really couldn't care less about the outcome of a single position because they're only focused on, does the market meet my rules? I'm gonna execute according to my processes. They've really trained themselves to not think trade by trade because they've expanded their time horizons and they're thinking in terms of a hundred trades or a thousand trade sample space. So the outcome of a position they couldn't care less about the outcome of a position on that single position. But what I've seen the sort of the amateur uh, traders are really caught up in is they're really caught up in the outcome of a position. They're really trying to seek after the win or they're really trying to avoid the loss. And they're stuck in this polarity of seeking the pleasure of winning, avoiding the pain of losing. And it's very easy to catch yourself in that position because you'll feel, you'll feel the emotion of, you know, I'm incredibly infatuated or in a set of, uh, of trying to seek this win or trying to avoid this loss. And ultimately what that does is it takes you away from your trading plan. So again, this comes back to the principle we discussed before, but ultimately what I've observed with, you know, what separates a consistent from inconsistent trader is the inconsistent traders are still in the mindset of trying to win and trying to avoid losing on a single position. Whereas the, you know, the master trader couldn't care less about the outcome of that single position. They're focused on, does the market align with their rules? If it does, I'm going to execute. If it doesn't, I'm not going to. And they're so focused in their processes. I've coined the, uh, the, the term process-based decision-making versus outcome-based decision-making. 
The masters use process-based decision-making. The amateurs use outcome-based thinking and decision-making. Um, so that's one other thing I would you know, love to put out there. And ultimately the thing that really helps you go from that amateur to the master is creating a solid plan and then having those mindset tools to be able to balance your emotions after win and loss to help train yourself to realize that um, the outcome, there is advantage and disadvantage to either outcome. Yeah. And that gets, you, that gets you sticking to your processes. I like that. Because like you said, if, you, if you're so focused on the individual trade, you're going to be so stressed. I, if, if I was focused on the individual trade, I'd be going for walks every hour. I'd be going, <laughs> you'd be just so stressed, stressed. So like you said, focusing on that sequence of, you know, wins to losses, that series of trades is the most important thing rather yeah. than individual getting stressed out when you take a loss, being glued to the charts like that, just watching price just tick up and down. <laughs> so you can't do it. It's a, it's a major difference. That's a good point. So wrapping things up here, Pat, we appreciate you coming on. I'm sure I do. And I'm sure the audience does as well. Appreciate you coming on. Appreciate your time. Is there anywhere the audience can find more about you? You know, feel free to plug your social media. We've got the free stuff as well for them. And I know you've got a course. So do you want to expand on that a little bit as well? Yeah, perfect. Well, first and foremost, thanks so much for having me on Bamba. And um, I really love what you're doing here. I think you're, you know, reaching a lot of people and and sharing some incredible insights um, on your channel. So thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, you guys can find me on um, Instagram, Pat Bay Looney um, is my Instagram handle. I've also got a website, patbaylooney.com, um, which I'd encourage you guys to check out. I've got, I've got a lot of free value on that website as well, which I think you guys can find incredibly useful. I've also got my YouTube channel, Pat Bay Looney, which is um, sort of starting up now. And I'm, I'm putting that free mindset mastery for traders and investors series out now which again, I think is going to cover a lot of free um, value for you guys. And I think you guys are going to get a lot of value from that. Um, and also, yeah, I do have a, a, a trader mindset mastery course, um, which is pretty much what I've found over working with about a hundred traders. I went in there and I found very consistent themes to the principles I passed on to these traders. And I created the four principles of mental mastery that I put into um, the traders mindset mastery course. Um, and um, that is a, a very powerful course. I share um, four of the most powerful tools I've found in my own journey over the last five years, my studies of psychology and human behavior, and also working with hundreds of trading clients as well. Um, and I would love to extend to you guys a 15% discount on that particular course. So if you're interested in, in checking it out, um, you can use um, code BAMBA15 um, to check that out. Um, but yeah, I've got, I've got the course and I've also got, you know, personal one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you guys are interested in doing that as well, to take your trading game to the next level. Yeah. Highly recommend considering it and checking out Pat's free course to start with and then going through that as well. Appreciate that, man. I look forward to coming back and I look forward to sharing some more value and, um, chatting again with you soon, Bamba. Thank you for having me on. Sounds good. You too. I'll speak to you soon. All right. Speak soon, bro. Bye-bye. And that is a wrap on today's video. So hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you took a while of value, especially from the call we had with Pat as well. Some of the psychology things we went through and just check out Pat's resources. You know, he's got a lot of value to offer. He's helped me in the past. He's gonna help a lot of other traders and already has to this day as well. And I just think he's very, very knowledgeable to have in your corner. So I'm gonna be working with Pat myself on a few psychology things as I continue to grow, continue to scale as well. So that's gonna be helpful. And I'll keep you updated. I'm sure we'll have Pat on the YouTube channel at some point as well in the future, which will be good to catch up and revisit some of the topics in a lot more detail as things progress. You know, especially in the trading space when a lot of people are so focused on the technicals, the style, the strategy, etc. A lot of mindset stuff is overlooked and a lot of the mindset stuff is super, super key in terms of leveling up because you can get to a certain level, but if you don't have that character, if you don't have the certain knowledge, if you don't have that psychology in front of you, you're going to limit yourself. It works on both ways. So remember to never limit your psychology. You can continuously grow and it's just a massive asset when it comes to trading and self-development as well. So I highly recommend you check out those resources, but that's it for today. We're going to wrap this up and uh, I will see you in the next episode. Speak to you soon.